Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Factory, which is a forum for people who have knowledge, experience and wisdom to share with the world. We are in season two and today is episode eight. And actually we wanted to skip this episode. This we were on vacation. <laughs> because yeah. we are in Germany this time and we went to the Integral Conference in Germany. But you know, we have invited again Lawrence Gold, who has already been our guest, and he had such a big success that we thought we must try to get him in again, because this is a very important technology he is offering you, and he has big projects with everybody, <laughs> so we thought it is a good idea to fit him in. and. As you see, we are in the office of my brother and we are able to do that. And we have also, apart from Lorenz, hey Lorenz, welcome again. We have here also Margarita, she is very kind helping us out in case we fall out because of internet speed. But not only for that, she is our regular guest in watching the show and I'm very grateful for that. And also Marcus. Marcus is here with me somehow in Germany. Yeah. <laughs> we meet in the same area, but always with internet. And I'm very grateful that he is here because he will be our student student for Lawrence. We are students too. You might have seen uh, some of our of Lawrence's procedures where he did it with us, but today it should be with a new person. So thank you very much, Marcus and. Margarita, to be here. Right. And now I should talk about the Wisdom Factory, which is uh, hosted by our nonprofit Paradiso Integrale in Umbria, Italy, where we usually broadcast from. We also offer retreats and we have guest rooms there. So whenever you're between Florence and Rome, hey, you're not far from us. <laughs> so before we present uh, our guest, couple words. We are deeply re uh, inspired. inspired yeah. That is the word uh, by Ken Wilber and his integral worldview. It has helped us to understand so much more about literally everything going on around us. And that's why we created the show, The Wisdom Factory. We want to give everybody an opportunity to experience what people create inside this integral worldview and how we can all collaborate to make a better world. And you can find out more about it on our main website, thepowerofrelationship.com. Yeah, this is more about us, what we are doing, but we have the other website which is directly related to the Wisdom Factory, thewisdomfactory.de. De. Yes, yes. you find it here on the lower third. And as we are talking this preliminary stuff, please subscribe to our newsletter by going to that website. And you will also have a free gift, an ebook, which is uh, the result, let's say, of the last season we did. And we have also created a community on Google Plus. And if you are interested in following up with these shows and with other topics, which are, let's say, leading X leading edge, leading edge <laughs> philosophy <yes. laughs> and ways of living, please join us there. That's us, leading edge people, mm. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. now you can talk about Lawrence a little bit. Can you present I sure him? could. Lawrence is uh, someone who's been in this business a long time. He began at the age of 16 using himself as a laboratory. And he's explored many different approaches to different aspects of the one being, what we might call the self or body, the inner and outer of our existence that constitutes Soma, the incarnated self. He has a private practice in clinical somatic education, which is concerned with chronic pain, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And he's online worldwide. Okay. Okay, and with that we give over to you, Lawrence, because you today want to share another process. We have already done in the first show the process which was called the Gold Key Release. It is, a, is, is how? No, oh, today my, my English is really, 
I'm always talking German, my English has gone away. So, <laughs> as I've understood, you want to introduce that briefly too, and then go to the other process, which is called the spell maker breaker. So, I give over to you. Okay, great. Hello, folks. So, what's in store today is a bit of information on the gold key release and related processes information on it and then experience of it and I will be coaching one of our guests Marcus who's on the film strip below coaching him on camera and you in the audience can follow along with the process as I coach Marcus through it so you can create an experience for yourself in your own setting I'm going to be introducing the processes first and then once we get into the process you'll have the experience at the end I'll be telling you how you can get more of this kind of instruction and access to the related processes for now let me say that the kind of person for whom this is going to be most valuable is someone who's encountered the limitations of either their own makeup that means mind and emotions and even of physical limitations and who has encountered limitations in the world as well and I being one such know what it's like to be frustrated with the way things have been going lately uh, particularly on the larger scale of planetary developments particularly the wackiness that's going on in the USA right now yes we Americans know it's wacky right now we feel like the horse is a little bit out of control doing a bit of runaway and it's been a concern of mine how to handle that because it seems that the exterior access points to the controlling power structure are held by the controlling power structure that means that those of us on the receiving end don't really have much say through the usual channels it was something I came to wonder about a year or two ago how we could handle that is there a backdoor entrance is there a secret way in that isn't going to be interfered with by the grip of control by those in power this is in the larger world scope and also the limitations of our personal life situations and I began to wonder as you'll see for a moment uh, pretty obviously why I would wonder this how the intelligence level of mass numbers of people could be increased the intelligence level on a mass scale and I had no idea how that could happen and then one development after another in related areas having to do with my work showed me that actually there is such a process that people can do it for themselves and that they can use that kind of process to clean up areas in their lives that are entangled with complications and get a more streamlined way of operating in life that means they can streamline their own mind by removing internal noise coming from their conditioning their memories of how their lives have gone and their ideas of how things are that constitute limitations that keep us strung up and apparently limited by George I found it and I started using it in myself and I started refining it in myself and by George it's working it has worked for me so far and I'm still using it I'm using it to clean up my own life and I've become curious what would happen if numbers of people learned this and started doing for themselves what I've been doing for myself and so I started out with a few people Mark and Heidi among them taking people through the procedures and found by George it worked with them too so what we have here is a, you could call it an inner wisdom transformation technology or you could call it a contemplative wisdom practice or a transformative contemplative practice in any case 
it works. So people who have encountered the limitations of life that have made things seem to be going very unsatisfactorily or even could be better will find these procedures extremely helpful in clearing their way. Okay, and Margarita has put a comment up from Kate Barber. Yes, increasing intelligence and awareness is the way to go. Empowering ourselves is the way to stop these power abusers. True, and we can do it from the back end of things. Namely, unseen by anybody, untraceable by anybody, unstoppable by anybody, and yet empowering with integrity. That brings to mind something I should say about these processes, which mean, which is to say they cannot be abused. The very act of going through these processes undermines tendencies to abuse them. You can't even get the result if you're not being honest with yourself. They require, well, I'll use Ken Wilber's expression, brutal honesty with oneself about oneself. So the processes can only be beneficial. They cannot be abused. That means even if the abusers got hold of them, they'd end up transforming them th themselves in exactly the ways we want. They would develop better and better integrity and higher and higher intelligence. So in today's session, I'll be taking all of us through something I haven't shared before which I call the setup. And the setup brings into focus the four faculties that constitute what I've called the tetra seed, which is the foundation of our experience of reality and of self. And it's the tetra seed that I've uh, shared in previous programs of this sort with Wisdom Factory and elsewhere as well. And the Tetra Seed consists of four basic faculties that are present in all living beings without exception. And I'll be introducing those faculties in the setup and bringing them into much clearer focus for you so that when we do the next procedure, which is Gold Key Release, you'll get a much more potent experience, even if you've used it before, than you did earlier on. Finally, we'll be practicing one or both of the spell maker and the spell breaker. Now, the word spell has to do with magic in a certain sort of way. If someone casts a spell, what they've done is entranced you with a certain possibility of experience. So when a woman casts a spell over the man, he's brought under her power. <laughs> Looky, see what happened with Heidi and Mark. And if you want to get free of the spell, you have to break the spell. There is a way to do that using the basic structure of the Tetra Seed, which I'm about to introduce to you. And at the end of this session, I'll be telling you how can, you can get more of the different kinds of procedures that are built on the Tetra Seed, get direct coaching with me and to work with groups who are involved in this, and develop greater and greater facility to the point where, if you're so inclined, you can teach others. It's my desire that this technology be spread far and wide. And the gold key release is a very good entry point, something that people can share with friends, family, and people in, let's say, if they're in a circle of people who are engaged in spiritual practice, or even people who just want to get ahead in the world and are hitting up blocks in their lives. And the gold key release may be shared freely. Yeah, I would like to come in here and say that we plan after the second season to host a free training, which is guided by Lawrence. 
And you can, this is, the dates are not yet precise, but it will be in, after the 15th of July, which is our last session of the Wisdom Factory Season 2. But you have here already the bit.ly link here over Mark, yes, I sir. guess. Yep. It is a short link for a landing page. You can write there your interest. Give us your addresses and we will keep in, be in touch with you when this free training begins. And as Lawrence said, he is so in desire to spread this um, mm -hmm. message and you can have it for free this time at least. So jump in. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the gold key release is very potent. There are procedures that are even many times more potent than the gold key release and can be used to, to unearth hidden controlling influences in ourselves and to dissolve their binding force so that we have freer access to our own faculties, our own abilities and new spontaneous actions will arise in us in situations that before would have been much more problematic. So there's a stupendous potential to these procedures and the gold key release is extremely potent in its own right but it's not as potent as some of the more advanced procedures. So before I start in with this, is there anything that uh, Heidi, you or Mark or Marcus or Margarita want to share, ask or tell? I can only uh, say, and I think it's your experience too, that we have experienced really amazing, astonishing shifts in our life, you know? It, the things which happen and then afterwards you say, what, what is it now? And then, ah, oh, we did the work with, <laughs> with Lawrence, probably it comes from there. So. Yeah, and what was that that was bothering me anyway? You know, yeah. it's just kind of. Whoosh. And I also want to tell you, Lawrence, whenever I am in a sort of uh, overwhelm, in a, a strange state, I often do it. And I did it on the 16 and a half hours drive from Italy to Recklinghausen up there. And I was really tired, and I, I realized this symptoms of tiredness in myself, you know. And I laid down for 10 minutes, I think, on a, on a parking spot yeah. on a bench, and I did the process, and afterwards I was good <laughs> for other eight hours, <laughs> sort of. And there's a difference between her being good and not being good, and I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I have a comment too? I, I I did the process with you last time, uh, Lawrence, and I discovered it's like you're going on the inside of your own computer and then see the computer programming, and then you see, okay, I'm going to delete that code and then release it. That's how it felt like because mm -hmm. it, it works very well. You know, in a way of speaking, it's like antivirus software. We've got glitches in our personal programs that have come in either from family influences or society, education, or the mass media, and they infiltrate and they start gumming things up in us. And so we can debug ourselves by using these procedures. The gold key release is very potent for that. So, let's see, is there anything else? Are we ready? Yep. <laughs> okay. So, in this next procedure, which is called the setup, there's one intention, and that is to bring into clearer focus the underpinnings of our sense of reality and of self. And those underpinnings consist of four aspects. Attention, imagination, intention, and remembering. There's no way we can have an experience without putting our attention on it. So attention is a necessary aspect of our experience of self and reality. Imagination is our sense of how things might go, might develop. Expectation. Also dreams, also creativity, all of these things which are emergent. They are emerging into our experience. 
Without that, we'd have no way of experiencing any kind of creative life. And in fact, we would have a great deal of trouble recognizing what we are experiencing because in a certain sense, in order to experience something, you have to have a sense also of how it's changing. And change is emergence of newness. So we have attention and imagination. The third is intention. Intention is our drive or push to have things be a certain way or to have things not be a certain way. Without that, nothing has any significance to us because we don't care. It's irrelevant to us if we don't have any intention relative to it. So again, it's necessary, if we're going to have an experience of anything, to have an intention toward it. Even if the intention is just to notice that it's there and to see what's there. That's an intention. And the last facet, the last faculty, is remembering. Everything we experience in life, we recognize because we have some sort of memory of that thing or something very similar. Without memory, we have no idea what's happening to us in this present moment. And in fact, the power of now as it's typically understood as being present to your senses is actually made up of attention, imagination, intention, and memory. Now, having heard that, you may have a mind full of theoretical ideas. I might have loaded you. It's not necessary to remember all this stuff because what we're about to do, the setup, is going to bring those to life. I'm going to be stepping you through sets of pairs of those four faculties for you to experience directly. Here's an example. In the beginning, we're going to bring attention to life, and I'm going to say, imagine attending to something. You do that. You imagine attending to something. It doesn't even matter what you attend to. You just imagine attending to it. Then, the next step would be, intend to imagine it, and you do that. So, at each step, there are is going to be a pair of faculties like that. You do the step. You'll find that as we go through each, that those faculties come to life for you. So, before I begin, any questions? Not yet. <laughs> okay, very good. So, let's begin. And I'm going to ask you to complete what you're doing at each step and give you a moment and then go to the next step. So, here we begin. Imagine attending. And complete what you're doing. Intend attending. Complete what you're doing. Remember attending. Complete what you're doing. Attend to attending. Now, complete what you're doing. Intend imagining. And complete what you're doing. Remember imagining. Complete what you're doing. 
attend to imagining. And complete what you're doing. Imagine imagining. And complete what you're doing. Imagine imagining. and complete what you're doing. Remember intending. And complete what you're doing. Attend to intending. And complete what you're doing. Imagine intending. and complete what you're doing. Intend intending. And complete what you're doing. Now attend to remembering. and complete what you're doing. Imagine remembering. And complete what you're doing. Intend remembering. And complete what you're doing. Now remember remembering. and complete what you're doing. Okay, let's check in. And how did that go? Will you first ask Marcus and then we bring up the comment? Good. Let's do Marcus. <clears throat> yeah, well, um, I think that uh, felt quite intense, mm -hmm. going to different levels and uh, taking different viewpoints. And somehow, um, yeah, I had this very strong feeling <laughs> up in my head. Mm -hmm. Just very intense working uh, through and um, just taking the thing that I was uh, trying to imagine and trying to attend to, and uh, basically, yeah, just just looking at different aspects. I think it's like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's mm. sort of uh, widening uh, your perspective in some way. 
Mm -hmm. Did you get a clearer perception of each of those? Did attention, did attending get clearer for you? Yeah, I think so. It's, I think uh, just basically um, just trying to think um, about doing stuff and uh, then remembering to attend to it, etc., is um, uh, very powerful. Okay. Heidi, any comments to share? Or is it Margarita I should talk to there? Yeah, go ahead, Margarita. So uh, Amanda Lambert is asking, could we have an example? I'm having difficulty translating this concept into practice. Am I placing my attention on an object? That's what she says. Okay, let me answer that one. In each of these steps, we're putting our attention on the pair of um, faculties. So if I say imagine attending, you don't need an object or a situation. You just put your imagine you just imagine attending. Imagine putting your attention someplace. Just a feeling of attention. Likewise, if you're intending imagining, there is a sense of a way we become when we're imagining something. The act of imagining itself has a feeling to it. So if you're intending imagining, that's what you're putting your attention on. Did that answer the question? I do hope so. I would add a little bit out of my experience is, is a certain body feeling because uh -huh. when I remember something, I feel it more downward in my body, I cannot say exactly. <laughs> and then these different pairs, I feel them, some is up here, some is up there, some is more there in my body, some is more there, these combinations of things. And actually at the beginning I sometimes had to tell myself in my language what you, sort of translating it for to, to get it what it is. So I think with a little bit of practice, uh, Ananda, you, you, you won't have a, a problem anymore. It will be evident how, how it works. Yeah, I think uh, I'd like to add something to that. I think um, if you're just uh, beginning and uh, with this kind of uh, spiritual practice that we are doing here, it's uh, actually much easier to just uh, pick something out of your own life and out of your own experience that you um, are saying, okay, you, you've got a goal that you want to focus on, for example, and you can try to imagine uh, putting your attention on that and just doing that. And uh, I think it's, it's a lot easier for, for starters. It's not uh, as abstract uh, on the level. It's much easier to do that way. Sure. You start with something concrete, and then when you're more familiar with the steps, you can let go of using anything concrete and just use each of those four faculties as your object. So, yeah, it's easier to start with concrete, something experiential. Yeah, and the, as Kate, you said, I had everything in my head and a bit disconnected from my body, and I can relate to that. Sometimes it happens to me too that in my head that uh, it goes from one side to the other, sort of. Okay, did the wrong thing here. Okay, here we are. So this is, uh, I think, also part of it. And then by the time you, you feel it in your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the very beginning people are coming into this from the way they've been conditioned to approach life in these times, which is mentally. The mind is the god of this time. The body is in disrepute. So people think the mind is the source of glory and everything is reducible then to words. What happens is a shift occurs here in which we go from merely words to the experience the words are pointing to.
in which case we become more feeling and the body sense comes awake because actually it's the body doing the thinking to begin with. But the reason we think it's in the mind is because thought is done in terms of words and words are formed in the speech apparatus, throat, tongue, mouth, lips, all of which are in the neighborhood of the head. So it's like reading by moving your lips, right? <laughs> There's a tendency always to have the speech apparatus working whenever we're thinking words. That's why we think the words are in the head. It's just the speech apparatus is there. Okay, anything more? Yes, actually. I just wanted to make, say that very succinctly, perhaps. The, the, the mental processes are the default position that, that yeah. we automatically fall into. And our body is something we have to you know, allow to develop and happen. Mm -hmm. It's not so automatic as it once was. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I see we have a comment from our Russian friend Mihai, but I cannot put it in the translator. Mihai, if you do that and post it again in this translation, Google Translator, then we can respond to it. Okay? Okay. Anybody else, Margarita? Uh, yes, Amanda Lambert says, interesting, okay, thank you. I'm very practical, concrete. I think I understand it now. Mm -hmm. And then we have another comment coming up here in a moment. Uh, Kate Babur, but it hasn't come up yet here. We'll see, I can read it. I have it, Margarita, you can uh, click on that. Yeah. So, uh, my object was music, that is spot on. My music has always been too much in my mind and I need to get it into my body. So, thank you to realize that. Kind of powerful, eh? Mm -hmm. And actually, when we do gold key release, you can make music the object that you run through the gold key release when we get to that. You don't even have to make it whether it's in your head or your body, just music. I have to interfere a little bit. I see we are already at 39 and we, okay. I think we will go much over the previous predicted time of 45 minutes. So. What do you think, uh, Lawrence, how much time we need so that our viewers have an idea? Mm, gold key release can usually be done in 15 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it doesn't look like on a 45-minute plan we can get into the spell maker, spell breaker. So how much do, more do you need? Are there 20 minutes for that? Yes. Okay, so it will be a little more than at the hour, probably. It will be past the hour, sure. So, hmm. I'm sorry, but it, these are things which are taking a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that said, let's move into the gold key release. And I'll be coaching you step by step similarly to the way I did with the setup. Yes, Lawrence, I want to, to tell people that you do the gold key release first because it's preparatory for the other one. And who has not seen the first show with the gold key release as topic, they might not get the second one. That's why you're doing it, isn't it so? Yeah, that, it's good to review the earlier show where I give more introduction. Okay. So, anything else before we get into it? No. Okay, Marcus, I invite you to choose an item that you feel stuck in, something that has captured your attention and that you would like to get disentangled from that you would like to dissolve. And you let me know when you've got that. And everybody who's listening, likewise, select something for yourself. And we'll be cycling through the gold key release multiple times until the object is dissolved.
whatever you've chosen. So you let me know when you're ready, Marcus. Uh, yeah, I think I've got something, yeah. Great. Okay. So notice what you feel when you regard that. Okay, complete what you're doing. Notice its location, that sensation, the location in you, its size and shape. Okay. Notice the intensity of intention in it. Yep. Notice the intensity of intention toward it and about it. Okay. Notice how much it all matters. Okay. Notice how it mattering involves you. Okay. Think to yourself, it's true. It's true. It's untrue. It's untrue. It's untrue. Okay. Remember the feeling of it's true. It's true. Yeah. Remember the feeling of it's untrue. It's untrue. It's untrue. Okay. Notice how remembering involves imagining. All right. Stop imagining. Let it dissolve and dissipate. Awaken. Okay. Is it more, less, the same, or gone? It's a little less. Good. Take what's left. Notice what that feels like in you. Okay. Notice its size and shape. Okay. Notice the intensity of intention in it, toward it, about it. Okay. Notice how much it all matters. All right. Notice how it mattering involves you. Okay. Think to yourself, it's true. It's true. It's untrue. It's untrue. It's untrue. Okay. Remember the feeling of it's true, it's true. Okay. 
Hmm? Remember the feeling of it's untrue. It's untrue. It's untrue. Okay. Notice how remembering involves imagining. Yep. Stop imagining. Let it dissolve and dissipate. Awaken. All right. Is it more, less, the same, or gone? It's less, yeah. Good. Take what's left. Notice where you feel it in you. Okay. Notice its size and shape. Okay. Notice the intensity of intention in it, toward it, about it. Mm -hmm. Notice how much it all matters. Okay. Notice how it mattering involves you. Okay. Think to yourself, it's true, it's true, it's untrue, it's untrue, it's untrue. Okay. Remember the feeling of, it's true, it's true. Mm -hmm. Remember the feeling of, it's untrue, it's untrue. It's untrue. Yep. Notice how remembering involves imagining. Okay. Stop imagining. Let it dissolve and dissipate. Awaken. All right. Is it more, less, the same, or gone? It's gone now. Okay, great. It's a, a good completion when you have trouble remembering what it was. <laughs> yeah. If it's easy to remember what it was, do some more. It will dissolve away. It will be difficult to remember. <laughs> okay. So... Let's open for some comments. Might be the people are too spaced out to type anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lorenz, it takes some time until they have typed and until it comes up. So mm -hmm. maybe you go right ahead and we talk about it later. Okay. Just to think about the time. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's run through the spell maker. Now, in the spell maker, we're using the same four elements, but the order is different. And order makes a difference. In the spell maker, there's a particular sequence, and in the spell breaker, there is an inverted or turned around sequence. The spell maker reinforces the experience that you're generating or originating in yourself and the spell breaker leans you towards dissolving the solidity or vividness of the thing you're working with. So to do the spell maker choose something that you would like to experience and Marcus let me know when you've got something. Uh, yeah, I've got something, yeah. Great. Okay, then just as you all may have noticed, we don't need to know what that is 
You don't ever need to disclose what you're working on if someone's coaching you. It can done, be done completely internally. So that item you've suggested, put your attention on it. Tell me when you've got it. Just make a gesture. Good. Now, imagine attending to it. Now, intend imagining it. Okay. Now, remember intending it. Now attend to remembering it. Now imagine attending to it. Now intend to imagine it. Okay. Now remember intending it. Okay. Now attend to remembering it. All right. Okay. So let's check in here. We've done two cycles. When you're working with this procedure by yourself, you may keep cycling until it gets as firm and vivid as you would like. Right now, it's our, my intention to have you get an experience of it and be able to use it by yourself. Marcus, do you have any feedback about what happened in doing this? Well, uh, I think it was um, a little bit similar to uh, the first experience. Um, it just, um, yeah, I, I try to focus uh, basically on the thing that I've selected, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it uh, sort of uh, just plays plays out uh, in my head, <laughs> mm -hmm. going through the different stages. Did the experience get more vivid? Uh, yeah, I think especially at the stage when uh, you said something about um, uh, trying to remember attending to it, etc. Mm -hmm. This, um, I think that adds an additional level to it. Mm -hmm. And if you keep on cycling through just this way, it will become so vivid that will feel like the experience is happening, or it will feel as if the experience was happening. Okay. Uh, let me check in with Heidi here. How are we doing? Yeah, I have a comment here from Amanda. She said, you want to read it? Sure. She says, um, <clears throat> that was really cool. Each time I was able to stop, stop, stop telling the story of this pain a little more. You remind me that I'm creating this experience. So realizing that, allowed me to relax on a very subtle internal level, way past where it feels like. Oops. I don't know what else he was going to say there. No, it's gone. Oh, oh we missed it. it just There's a little more, but we're not fighting it. There yeah, it I, can, I can read it uh, okay. from there. The internal level, the way past where it feels like the pain lives, especially like the part where you said, see how much this all matters to you. Big clue, smiley face. Thank you. <laughs> so the just as an, um, let's say an advice to our audience, writes shorter comments but more, so we can bring them up completely on the... On the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here we have Ulrika Halden. This works great. In the first process, I ran through a task instead of planning it. The working steps easily emerged. In the second round, I tested a physical state and it changed from tiredness 
for readiness to get moving. I'm trying your process for the first time. How long might this effect of changing physical state last, she asks. Mark, you can answer that one. Uh, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> it, it just sort of fades into, into, uh, <laughs> into vapor. It doesn't actually go away. I haven't lost anything from my first experiences. They're still there. They're still active. You know, what, what happened then is still current. It's still, it, it's, it, just, it remains. It remains. It just, it, it's, my, my mind is thinking differently. You know, its relationship to the body is different. Yeah. And you told me when you had the pain, the very first time the pain went away, yeah. and then it was away for some time, and then it came shortly back, and you could get it away again, wasn't yeah. it? So? Yeah, and if it does appear again, it's very mild and temporary, and it's because the work is done. <laughs> the work is done. We have a comment from um, uh, Kate again. So she says, vivid is the right word. Thank you for that comment, Kate. Back to you, Lawrence. All right, then. First, let's check timing. Heidi, what do we look like? Three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> Three that minutes. sounds like we should, then we should wrap things up. And, and the breaker, the breaker we need. I know, I know. I don't. If we, well, shall, if we, we shall we do that as a teaser, the, so that people opt in for your free course, and you will do all that. And remember, we have created this Bitly link uh, with the gold B B I T dot L Y slash forward slash mm -hmm. wisdom gold so go there and you will have a lot more of practices and it's always exciting <laughs> <laughs> was that the teacher or are we going to do a little bit of it mm. I think I don't know I think we we say it is a teaser and people can have it there okay, okay. It, it's and then better you to have also Lawrence you, you write it down now in the event page you have everything right. written on your blog and on your website, and people can do it by themselves, reading uh, exactly. the text. Right. I'll be putting the link directly, a clickable link, directly into the chat of the event mm -hmm. window for this occasion. And when you click the link, it will take you to a blog entry in which I explain and instruct in the spell maker and the spell breaker. At the bottom of that entry, you'll see links to other procedures, including the advanced ones. I'm letting you know in advance that the advanced ones require a measure of proficiency in this procedure. The simpler the procedure, the more proficiency you will need, but there are some incredibly potent procedures. You've got a taste of it here. Yeah, wonderful. So. Uh, thank you, Lawrence, and I will come back to the other Bitly link, which we have, I think, on top of yes. me. This is another procedure which you can do by listening to audios. This is sort of no noises, you can say, but it helps uh, to, to go into different states of, of consciousness and even the meditation and also be free of uh, stress. And this Bitly link is be it dot l y slash i a w a k e right. i awake <laughs> technologies. So please check that out too. And as I said, opt in into our for to get our newsletter and the free gift in the wisdomfactory dot d e. And I want to simply add that i awake is a sponsor of ours. So we like to be very nice to them and hope you will too. <laughs> <laughs> they might. We hope that they buy something. Bye, bye. Buy a CD. <laughs> or download. It's not. CDs don't work anymore so much. Anyway. So we are at the end.
Thank you very much, Margarita. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much, Lawrence, for this great thing. I'm so convinced about the potency of what you are doing, and we are very happy to host you for this free uh, training, which we, we will give at the end of our show. I think that's a good way to end here. Oh, let's here. see. Robert Hall says, right? Yeah, <coughs> Robert Hall is writing. Great. I focus on removing blockage, pain, or even improving talents and abilities. I show myself reaching back to old pains and talents. I could really see these events once again. I will just say it works. Good. Wonderful. So with that said, I say goodbye and we see you next week. Next week we have a very interesting topic. It is again on the outside because this time the wisdom technology was an internal Inside technology. technology. Yes. Next time it will again be an outside technology. And you tell us what it will be. We are going to be talking with the woman who wrote the book on the Middle East. What goes on there, why all the efforts have failed, what is needed, she understands. She is a Middle Easterner herself and understands this process so well. Tune in if you want to get unconfused. Her name is Elsa Malouf and uh, Route to Peace in the Middle East mm -hmm. is the title. So we are happy to see you next week and we will be in Italy again with our normal background and everything. Yeah. So. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Good night, all. Bye.